Hello, welcome to this lesson where we are going to implement retrieving data from Parse into our iOS app. Right now I'm looking at the Parse backend where we saved a couple of messages to um, our message table. We have howdy and hello. And in our Xcode project, we're going to create a new method to retrieve this data from Parse. First of all, let's go into uh, the documentation here and take a look at retrieving objects. Right here we have saving objects which is what we went through in the last lesson. There's another section for retrieving objects. So we get introduced to this class called pfquery and let's see change it to swift first. So we create a new query object for a particular class name. For us, it's going to be message because that's our table right here. And then here, this method get object in background with ID. So what is the ID? The ID is something that gets automatically assigned when you insert a row. However, we don't want to retrieve a single object by specifying its ID, and that's the code sample that it gives here. Uh, scrolling a little bit down, I didn't see another code sample in this section for retrieving objects. Uh, to demonstrate how to retrieve multiple objects of the same class. Uh, but if we go into Xcode, we can take a look at the autocomplete methods to see uh, what sorts of methods are available with a PF query. And actually, if we go back into uh, the parse documentation here, this is the documentation for objects. If we go down here for queries and go to basic queries, actually this is what we want to look at instead. So let's change that to Swift right here. Uh, and here we find that we create a query, right, for a class name. You can specify uh, a WHERE clause where a certain column sh would be equal to a certain value if you wanted to. And then you call this method called find objects in background with block. And that will retrieve all of the objects that match this class name and match this criteria where key equals to whatever. But we don't have to specify this because we just want all of the message objects. So we're going to go back to our Xcode project and create a new method in the viewcontroller.swift file. I'm going to call it retrieve messages. All right, and here what we want to do is create a new PF query um, call find objects in background. Okay, so var query, let's explicitly say that it's a PF query. Create a new PF query object for the class name message, which is our table. Uh, and now we're going to say query dot uh, find objects in background with block. And this block, you can double click it this parameter here to expand it. Uh, so the two parameters for this block of code, uh, there's an array of any object and NS error. Let's go back to the documentation, see what they put here. Uh, they put a label called objects for this any object array and error. You can put anything in there, double click it. I'm just going to use what they put as our labels as well. Double click that. And then in here, we can loop through the objects array, uh, retrieve the text column value of each object and their PF objects, assign it into our messages array 
what is our messages array? If we scroll all the way up here, we created a variable up here, which is a string, which is an array of strings. And then in our view did load method, we assigned, we appended into it test one, test two, test three. And that's what our table view displays. It reads messages array and displays all the strings in there. So if we go back to the retrieve messages function, what we want to do, right? We want to loop through the objects that are returned from the query. We want to retrieve the value in the text column for each of those objects. And we want to assign it into our messages array. And then finally, reload the table view so that it displays the latest messages from there. Actually, before we do that, also, we should clear the messages array. So uh, we don't get duplicate messages, you know, you're not, you're not appending, um, you're not refreshing the messages and then appending all of the duplicates on there, we want to clear all of the messages out of the array, and then just have the ones that are returned from the query. Okay, so let's implement this. So clear the messages array self dot messages array, uh, just gonna assign it a new array object loop through the objects array. So we can use a for loop here. So for message object in objects like that. And these two will go into that loop. And after we've looped through all of those message objects, then we will reload the table once. So retrieve the text column value of each PF object. Let message text be a string equals actually it's going to be an optional message object as pf object text why do i have to write it like this let's see any object okay so we gotta do that. Let's do optional casting. Okay, let me explain this line here. So I'm creating a new variable called message text, it's going to be of string optional type. And what does optional mean? That means that this message text could be nil, or it could be an actual string object. Why could it be nil? Because I'm not sure what's in this text column of this object. Now let's explain the part on the right. So it's going through the objects array, right? This is the array that gets returned to us from the query. And the type of it is an array of any object. Now any object is essentially what the name applies, it could be any object. So I have to cast it using this keyword as to tell Xcode to treat it as a PF object. I know for a fact that the objects that are returned uh, with this PF query are all PF objects. Uh, that That's essentially just a parse object. So I'm telling Xcode to treat this message object as a PF object. And then only then can I use the square bracket notation and specify the column uh, because that works with PF objects. And then it basically gets the value for this column. And then I got to tell Xcode to treat it as a string. Because Xcode doesn't know, you know, what value comes out of this column. We know it's a string. So we're going to cast it as a string. And why is there a question mark here? Well, this is, uh, I declared my variable as an optional string type. So using this as question mark, will basically make it so that if the value coming out of this text column is not a string, it's going to assign nil to my variable. And if it is a string, then it's going to assign the actual string object into my message text variable. So I'm going to say here, if message text is not equals to nil, which means that there actually is a string object, then self dot messages array dot append 
the message text. And I have to put an exclamation mark there because message text is an optional value and this exclamation mark will unwrap that optional value to get at the actual object. Now, if this is the first time you've ever heard of optional values and stuff like that, it's gonna be really confusing for you guys. But if you take my beginner course on my site, we go in depth into optionals and you're going to get a good grasp on it. Alternatively, you can just Google uh, Swift optionals and I'm sure you can find a lot of text and documentation about what they are as well. Okay, so now this chunk of code basically goes through the returned objects, right? It takes the text uh, column, takes the value from that, assigns it to a variable called message text, and if there's actually text, it appends it into our messages array. Finally, here we can call self dot message table view dot reload data. And basically this forces the table view to read the messages array again and display all of the strings in there. Uh, finally, we got to call this method. So let's go up here. Let's erase this dummy data now. We don't need test one, test two, and test three. Instead, let's say retrieve messages from parse self dot retrieve messages. Okay, now let's run it. Okay, so we see something happening and there we go. These are the two messages or the two pieces of data in our parse backend right here. Uh, the next thing I'd want to do actually is fix this little margin up here. Um, add some space to the top and actually I want to uh, reload the messages when I add a new one. So I'm going to stop the project. I'm going to go into the storyboard to add that margin at the top first. So here's the table view. If I open the constraints, I have a vertical space constraint up here and if we go to the right hand side we can see that table view dot top is equal to super view dot top dot margin uh, and the constant is zero. I'm just going to put 20 there. Adds a little bit of a separation there. And that should be enough. Okay, I'm going to go back to view controller now and the send button tapped method. Okay, this is where I want to add a call to the retrieve messages. So let's take a look. Create a PF object set the text column to the text in the text field, save in the background with block. And then if it's successful, we have a to-do here, retrieve the latest messages and reload the table. So here, let's just call self.retrieve messages. Okay, so let's run the app now. And then following this, there's one improvement to the code, which I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so our messages are retrieved from the parse backend with, you know, that margin or that space at the top. Uh, I'm going to add a new one. Let's just put, hey, send. Um, wow, that happened really quick. Okay, so you can see from the console down here that message saved successfully. And it also retrieved the latest messages so that we see that here. Okay, so about that improvement. Now this may get a little technical for you guys, but try to follow along and see if it makes sense. Now normally your app runs on the main thread. Now what's a thread? Think of it as a series of code being executed. So when it gets here, send button tapped, it's executing these lines of code, uh, it's updating the user interface if necessary, and it gets to this, this one where it says save in background with block. Now at this point, Something has to happen in the background while the main thread continues going to update the UI or respond to user events or whatever. So what it does is it spawns a new thread that will happen in parallel. And that thread that gets dispatched or that parallel thread that gets spawned will execute this code, you know, when the time comes. But what's really bad is to update the UI from that spawned thread. You only want to update the UI and UI means user interface 
you only want to update the UI from the main thread. And so what we can do, you can see here in this code that's going to be run by that spawned thread, we're updating the UI with this code right here. And then we're calling retrieve messages. And in this code, it's going to start a new thread. It's going to run this code right here and it's going to call reload data for the table view and that's going to update the UI. So those two places right here, you know, where we're enabling uh, the text fields and this part right here where we're loading the data, we want to run those on the main thread instead. And there's actually a way we can do that. And this is what we're going to do here. There's something called dispatch async where we can specify a queue and we're going to say dispatch get main queue. And put that UI code, that code that updates the UI, we're going to put it in there. And so, you know, this code gets dispatched to a, a parallel thread. Uh, but it's going to run this code on the main queue or on the main thread when it can. So we're going to do the same thing in retrieve messages just before it reloads the table here. Oops. that. Okay. So let's run it again. In our case, even when we didn't have that dispatch async to the main thread, uh, we still saw the uh, UI update. But if you were doing a lot of work there, you would actually um, see the UI freeze. And that's not a good thing. So let's type in yo send. Okay, so there it goes. You don't even notice a difference because we're not doing too much work here. But that's a good practice to follow. Alright, so we've got a very, very, very basic messaging app here that sends messages to our parse backend. Let's refresh the data here. And retrieves those messages and that data back into our iOS app. Now this demonstrates how to use parse as a backend and database for your app. If your app were more complex or if this chat app were more complex, we could have a users table, you know, where you would actually create a user account. And so the messages could be tagged to a specific user. Uh, your queries would be more complex because you would maybe retrieve messages from only particular users. But I hope this simple demo serves as a starting point for you to dig deeper into Parse and find out all it has to offer. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.